to get a win at Minnesota last Wednesday night was was huge for our program. Obviously, wins on the road uh, have been very hard to come by, and you know, especially in the rivalry series uh, with Minnesota, and um, especially coming off a week ago Sunday's game with Iowa, uh, a game that we were in control, you know, for for three quarters of the game before they made a, a great run. You know, to get our kids back out there and and uh, you know fight off, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, not our best second quarter, um, and and not be winning going into halftime. We played probably as good a third quarter as we've played all year, uh, especially on the defensive end. And then to be able to sustain that um, and make the plays, not only the plays um, on, on the defensive side when we had eight stops in a row in the Minnesota game, but I think we got the shots we wanted, the ball changed sides of the floor, we got shots in the paint, and, and we're able to score a tremendous amount of our points in the paint. So, um, you know, lead to Nebraska is the first time we've played somebody twice this year. Um, it was not our best showing when we played at Nebraska. Um, great crowd, you know, the opportunity to, to celebrate the 2000 uh, WNIT championship team on Saturday. A lot of them came to practice on Friday, and, you know, I think that's so important with Coach Albright and the alumni and to be able to have our kids talk about their experiences and, and share those stories. And then uh, kind of a, a little bit of a back and forth in the first half. Again, uh, very similar third quarter to Wednesday night in Minnesota. Uh, we held them to a really low shooting percentage, kept them off the free throw line in the third quarter, which was a huge problem in the first half. Um, and then, uh, you know, it just did not get the stops in the fourth quarter that we needed. Uh, sent them to the line 11 times. Um, and, and just the ball didn't flow as freely as it, as it needed to. Uh, to give ourselves a chance to win. I thought when we got the lead up, you know, we hit when Amani Lewis hit the hit the three to go up one, you know, it was huge. You had to get that next stop, and, and we forced a bad shot deep in the shot clock and gave up an offensive rebound for a three. Um, you know, that ends up being the winning points. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you can sit and, 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 and put your head down and, and pout about it, or you can get ready and, and get, you know, and know our, I think our team's improved over the last two weeks and seeing how we played at Nebraska. Uh, and see how we played, you know, against Iowa, against Minnesota, against Nebraska. We've got to be able to take those positives and move forward. Take questions now for Coach Dennis. Uh, you, you, going through a couple of those close games, Iowa and Nebraska, you go back to Rutgers the first game of the year. There's games if you'd somehow held your leads, you'd be have a chance for a breakthrough kind of season going. Are there consistent threads, or is it random plays in each game? Is there different issues that pop up from one game to the other, or is there something consistent through there when you aren't able to hold on? Yeah, I mean, I I think you look on both sides of the ball. I think, and on the offensive side, we're much better when the ball is changing sides of the floor. Um, the ball is getting, you know, has a lot of touches, um, and 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 we just know in each of those games when Amani Lewis touches, especially late, she's going to see a lot of people around her. And I thought she, she's a willing participant to give it up. Um, I think in all three of those games, the ball maybe stuck a little bit. We we you know, and and we tried to do things on one side of the floor. You know, I, I think defensively in all three of those games, you know, coming up with key stops and rebounds. You know, and, and, you know, we were plus nine in the rebounding category after the first half of the Nebraska game. You know, just a couple huge times when we played 27, 28 seconds of really good defense, you know, and all of a sudden it, it might not be even just an offensive rebound basket, but an offensive rebound that goes out of bounds and stays with them. And, you know, it just, just coming up with that key stop, coming up with that um, key opportunity, you know, to, to, you know, you know, I think – not only I thought that was the difference in the Minnesota games. Even if we'd have missed some of those shots, we got in the lane, we got to the free throw line. You know, we took advantage of that, and and we haven't been able to do those in those in those three games. You know, is put that pressure back on the other team. And you can sit there and say you give a credit to their defense, but you also have got to be able to make those plays. You've got to execute and make sure whatever action you're running, everybody is doing their part on what's designed. Um, but again, it's not just about making shots. I think you've got to put people in that position, and obviously that's our staff's job, um, and make them feel comfortable with that shot the same way they were comfortable the first three quarters. Alec? Uh, Coach Zip is back here with the tragic news yesterday of Kobe Bryant. The entire basketball community worldwide seems to be affected by that. Have you noticed a ripple-down effect into your locker room at all with, with your girls just with the news yesterday? 
Yeah, I mean, I reached out. We were off yesterday, and, and I think you know some of them reached out to me first, and I reached out to all of them. Uh, you know, right now there there was no better uh, you know uh, supporter of women's basketball than Kobe Bryant and his daughter, and and I I was fortunate enough last you know summer to be at the WNBA All Star Game, and and some other w, and some other NBA players came and. <laughs> sat courtside and came in a couple minutes in and left a little bit early. Kobe was there before the game started. Kobe stayed and took pictures with every WNBA player. Um, he's a, he was a dad, you know, and I, I think that's the, that, you know, hits home even more with me is, is being a father and being a surrogate father to 16 daughters. And that's what I reached out to them and just said, you know, uh, you know, life is too short. Do not take anything for granted. Take a minute and reach out to your parents tonight tell them how much you appreciate all their support because things can change in an instant. And, you know, it, it obviously brought you know, unbelievable credibility to our, our women's basketball, you know, uh, universe. Um, and that obviously trickles down to women's college basketball. But, you know, whether it was bringing, you know, helping, helping showcase the, the great players in the college game or in the WNBA by visiting them and all the things he was doing in retirement, um, because he wanted those role models for his daughter. And I think our kids see that, and I think they're heartbroken. Um, and, again, I think, you know, we have a really close team, and I think it was uh, really appreciated that I think them reaching out to each other as well, uh, just knowing that this was something so unexpected and uh, that, that we've got to make sure and, and take these relationships that we have in the basketball community uh, and never take them for granted. Dennis. It's hard to follow that, but... Uh... <laughs> On a, on a lower level issue, you've, you had two scorers who've been pretty consistent all year with Amani and Abby, and you've always talked about trying to find that third. At this point in the year, do you see someone emerging, or are you going into games trying to look for who that night might be the third, and it might be somebody different each night? Yeah, I think sometimes it's based on matchups, um, you know, and, and, and who we feel like, whether it's you know, we'll, we'll, you know, I think Suzanne Gilreath always gives us an opportunity off the bench, but I think people know what her skill set is, and sometimes that helps the other perimeter players by taking some of that help away. Um, trying to get Nia Beverly started, um, you know, wh whether it's, you know, with the ball in her hands or actions to move the ball and get it back in her hands. Uh, obviously, Sydney Hilliard's able to score the ball in a different way, and she scored it well in the first quarter, and then – uh, you know, wasn't able to get on track as she has in other games. I thought Julie did a really good job in the fourth quarter. She made two huge baskets for us, you know, on the one step through play and then obviously the three-pointer from the top of the key. Uh, no question, you know, no question. We need that third score to, and we need a perimeter score to be able to do that to take some of the bodies away from Abby and, and Imani. I thought Imani shot it really well, um, you know, from, from, you know, the free throw line extended. Obviously, she makes the three because um, that's what Nebraska was willing to give her uh, after she got to the rim a lot the first time we played them. So, um, you know, I think as we look at each team and see where's that best possibility going to be and try to build the game plan with that, um, it, it just it, it's not been one person, and I don't think it will necessarily just be one. I'd love for one person to kind of covet that and, and really hunt that action. Um, but, you know, right now I think as we look at each game and how they're going to help off of and who they're going to help off, what will that give us? And, you know, and, and, and be able to give that, be able to build a game plan to help that third score. Uh, you got Indiana first this week, and that's a program that's been on the rise the last several years and maybe having its best team this year. What have you seen in that program in general as you've watched that and this team in particular, the challenges they p present you? Yeah, the, you know, it, it, Terry's done an unbelievable job, I think. Um, but, but anybody who doesn't say it doesn't start with Kurt Miller and what he was doing and, and the players that he brought in. Um, you know, I, I think you saw that was a team that right before he left, um, you know, was, was in the WNIT um, and, and had players who were, you know, 1,500-point scorers uh, that he recruited in that core group. And then Terry and her staff have done an unbelievable job uh, of, I think, not only adding great players, but doing sometimes in uh, unconventional ways, whether it's through transfers, whether it's through going outside of the box and maybe going outside the region and finding kids that maybe are a little bit hidden. Um, you know, I, I think one thing you can always count on with Indiana teams with Terry Morin is they're going to be really tough man-to-man -to -man defensive teams 
Um, that's almost 99% of what they play. Um, and I think offensively, you know, they, they, they have, you know, they've had to change a little bit the way they played this year uh, due to injuries, due to graduation. Um, and it's and, they, and you've watched their kids improve. You know, we, we really thought Grace Berger, somebody coming out of high school, was going to be an impact player in the Big Ten. And she had some ups and downs as a freshman, and, and she's really emerged uh, as, as a big-time scorer for them. Uh, Allie Patberg obviously started at Notre Dame, transferred into IU, uh, you know, somebody who came in after not playing much in a year and a half at Notre Dame, kind of took the reins of the offense and, and gives them what they need, scores when needed, and finds people. Um, you know, Jalen Penn is as good a perimeter player as in our league at creating her own shot and, and, and knocking down shots from the three-point line. So, you know, it's a credit to her. I, I think they have, they have looked and said, hey, we're not just going to be able to recruit Indiana kids or Midwest kids. Let's get outside of the box. Let's be open to transfers. Um, and, and then I think the, the other thing that we all try to do is once you get those kids there, how much better can you make them? And uh, I think they've done a tremendous job with that. Obviously, Janice Banks is there, you know, former Badger. She's done a tremendous job, I think, with in-state recruiting. And now Indiana kids are coming. Um, but also somebody that played in this league and, and was successful of being able to share her experiences with the players.